what will it look like? I want to do Game Boy Advance or, you know, that old fat Sega Genesis thing? The display I plan to use is going to be a 5-inch LCD. Stereo speaker system, a D-pad, below the D-pad an analog joystick, six action buttons to handle the different systems, start and select, dedicated hotkey button and a button for rewind functionality. You know, some of the emulators offer it and I want to make use of it, particularly for that Mario. Triggers, left and right. We're gonna have USB for charging and copying ROMs. Major parts. Well, I'm gonna use a Pi Zero W. Why? Because it has USB, OTG, and Wi-Fi. And both those things are awesome. You'll be able to just plug it in, it'll pop up as a thumb drive, and you, there'll be like a manual there, and you can copy ROMs over. It'll be super sweet. Just gonna use a tactile switch to power it on. I'm gonna program the DT blob file so that one of the pins will go high as soon as it powers on. So that tactile switch will power everything on momentarily. The GPIO will come on and BAM! Power. And then when uh, you shut down the unit, GPIO turns off and everything gets cut. Cut off of power. To power the analog joystick, I'm going to use a uh, Adafruit module, an ADS-1015. So we get true analog joysticks for systems like Atari and Nintendo 64. Don't know how well the N64 is going to run, but by god I'm going to try it. Seeing as we'll have two channels left over, I'm going to use one of them for uh, controlling the volume using a thumb wheel pot. We will use the fourth and final A to D channel to monitor the battery. We're going to use the DPI display method and we're going to have a headphone jack. So I'm going to apply some hot glue to the back of this cardboard and then adhere the cardboard to the back of the display. This will allow me to safely mount my components to the back without shorting anything. Now I'm just moving the different parts around like a jigsaw puzzle to get what I think is the best fit. Before soldering the wires to the board, I'm going to apply ample amounts of flux. This should help prevent any bridging. Now for the soldering. Before gluing the breakout board to the back of the display, I'm going to solder pieces of wire wrap wire to the pins I'll be using, or at least the pins I think I'll be using. Here I attach the 40 pin breakout board that connects to the display and will show me where it'll go. Now I apply glue and secure the breakout board to the back. Next, I secure the Pi to the back of the display as well. Flipping it over, I want to make sure the test pads that I need are visible and clear, such as the USB data lines. Now to wire up the display to the actual Pi itself. Incorrectly. I followed the layout for mode 2 by mistake, as I meant to use the third mode so that I could free up pins 18 and 19 for audio. So I had to redo the green and red data pins and now everything works. Now that I have the display and pie figured out, I need to further flesh out the design. I know what controls I want, but I'm still not quite sure where they should go as I've never designed a gamepad till now. So I'm going to loosely sketch it up on a notepad. I'm not worried about the joystick PCB board overlaying the speaker as the speaker will be mounted on the face of the unit and the joystick PCB will be mounted on the rear of the unit. Next I'll do a final layout of the front in Fusion 360. I've mocked up the display and the components glued to the back of it so that I have a point of reference. There are a couple of reasons why I'm doing this model. Uh, the first is to better flesh out how large and where everything's going to be. Everything's going to be drawn relative to the components I have and the measurements I have taken. Two, 
to assist in the fabrication. I could use this model to create a drawing and have the pieces professionally fabricated, or in the case of this project, I'll be using it as a template to assist in fabricating it myself. You'll see more on this in a bit. Three, when I go to make the next generation of Gamer Man Ultra Classic, I'll have an existing model to start with. You know, assuming it's any good. I did my drawing in Fusion 360, and then, uh, actually I guess I did the model, and then I made a drawing, and that's what this is from. Now, you may have noticed that this entire thing, all the text here is mirrored, and this is backwards from what was in my drawing. Uh, there's a very good reason for that. I am going to attempt to use acetone to uh, transfer um, the toner to my piece of lumber. Just kind of do like a twist over top. That's a downward force. Um, so this is basically just here to act as a guide, help me cut everything out, and uh, cut and drill things out. Because <laughs> that, I am completely unsure of. So I made this board by using through hole components, but I'm worried that it's going to add too much thickness, so I've decided to make a PCB board using surface mount components and include the ADS-1015 chip and a passive audio low pass filter while I'm at it. I'm not going to show the entire process, but simply highlight some of the key major parts. First I'll place my main components, primary ICs and connectors, space them apart so I have plenty of room for my passives and then start placing my passives, resistors and capacitors as such. As I add components, I make a few connections and update my PCB board as I go. I do this for two reasons, to make sure my schematic symbols have footprints and to check the pads on the footprints are numbered correctly while everything is fresh in my mind. Once I think I have everything done on the schematic, I'll start moving the parts around on the PCB. Here's the final PCB board. I have two four pin connectors that provide power, I square C, and ground. The idea is I can still daisy chain additional I square C devices if I wanted to, and this should be possible as the I square C lines don't branch off at all. 
The first chip in the line is the MCP23017 I.O. chip. It has pull-down resistors on all the I.O. and two 9-pin connectors for all the buttons and common lead. Second is the ADS1015 chip and three 4-pin connectors. One is for the A to D inputs, another for ground, and the third a 3.3 volt reference. Finally, a simple passive low pass filter, in and out. So I've been uh, 3D printing my par parts and using um, Gorilla Glue to uh, secure them to uh, the face of my unit uh, made of uh, the plywood. Um...
finished unit. Things I could have done better or different. I think if I were to build another handheld, I would definitely have the front laser cut and etched. This would allow me to make better fitting 3D printed pieces, and the laser etching would probably look better than the toner acetone method I used. I would also probably do a proper PCB circuit board. No, I would definitely do a proper PCB circuit board. This would save me so much space. I over using those individual modules. Even the board, uh, the one board I made, saved me a ton of space. Um, so integrating that all into one circuit board would save space and make the build much easier to do. Overall, I'm pleased with my build given the time constraints I had um, and the same kind of time constraints everyone else had. But really, this is just another reason to do another build. Um, again, things I could improve upon. Hell, I might even consider using the Pi Compute modules. At the very least, I'd get more memory and possibly even uh, faster graphics.